This is the new drawing that we're going to be working on today. It looks like this. And the assignment says, today we'll be working on a project that will require us to create a few new drawing planes, create some references between lines, and create a few threaded holes. It's a challenging piece, but it's not tricky. All the different parts or components are easy to draw if you can keep all the measurements straight. So as we take a look at this, it looks like we've got a, a cylinder down at the bottom going horizontally and then a rectangular piece coming off of it. Up top, there is a kind of a keyway or a oblong looking circle thing that goes all the way through. And on this part, there's a top little piece that connects as well. Um, this is a picture of the back of this. So notice this part here is only on the front. It's not on the back. And then there's a cylinder that goes down until it runs into this piece that goes through. Uh, there's a side cylinder that comes in at, at the side. And I've got one, two, three little threaded holes as well. Um, so I think the way that we're going to attack this tonight is we're going to start at the bottom and we'll call this the front plane. Actually, what I would like to do is create these two circles and extrude them using a front plane that's in the middle. So we're going to extrude this in both directions, um, half of one and five sixteenths to the front and half of one and five sixteenths to the back. So we'll keep the front plane right in the middle of this cylinder. And then we'll do that again as we look at the front plane. We'll draw this top rectangle um, from, let's see, it looks like from the center point of the circle, the rectangle goes up three and three fourths to the center of this. So we're gonna draw that rectangle up three and three fourths from the center of this up. Um, and then we will, from that center plane, we'll project out a, a new plane that is, um, looks like from the center here out one inch. So we'll project from the front plane out one inch and we'll create a parallel plane. We'll draw this bottom half, looks like a couple of circles, and then there's a flat bottom. The flat bottom is one and a quarter down from the center. So we'll create like this shape right here, here, and we'll project it all the way through over to the back side. And then we'll go from the center here, we're gonna go six and a half inches up, We'll create a new plane up here on the top and we'll create the cylinder and we'll drop, we'll extrude the cylinder down until it runs into the top of this thing. All right. Then we can come back and we can create the top of this and extrude it back until it hits this cylinder. Um, we'll cut out this keyway. We'll drill this hole. We'll drill this. Oh, then we'll have to come to the side plane. And it looks like um, from the center here, the face of this is one and seven sixteenths. So we'll, we'll create a new side plane from the center and, ex and we'll set it out one and seven sixteenths. And then we'll create this and we'll press it back or we'll extrude it back until it hits the cylinder. Um, we'll thread our holes. Well, we have another hole down here to, to drill and thread. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll round over. Looks like all the fillets are an eighth inch. So all these corners all around have an eighth inch fillet. Okay. 
Uh, hopefully you can read these measurements. Some of the measurements get kind of fuzzy when I take a picture out of the book, but um, if it has a tolerance like this, like this hole has a tolerance between 8.73 and 8.875, um, we'll use the 0.875 um, just because it's a, a whole fractional number. Uh, let's see. Is there any more like that? Now, if there is, we'll, we'll come to it when we get to it. Okay, so that's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start down here at the bottom. And, well, let's, let me stop this share and let me turn on SolidWorks. Now, let's stop this one. Share this one. All right, we're gonna create a new part. It is going to be in inches, pounds, and seconds. And we're going to start on the front plane. And we're going to extrude boss with a circle. All right, it says that the exterior diameter is two and nine sixteenths. Um, two and nine sixteenths is 2.565, uh, sorry, two five, five six two five would be the decimal equivalent of two and nine sixteenths. Okay. And we've also got the hole on the inside. So I'm going to draw that right now also. And dimension it. And that's going to be 1.625. Okay, and I'm going to exit the sketch. And instead of going in one direction, we're gonna go mid-plane, all right? And the total is going to be, uh, what does it say here? one and five sixteenths. So that's 1.3125. So 1.3125. And notice that the drawing is in the middle and it extrudes it in either direction. So we've got a, our front plane is still in the middle, right? in the middle of this object. Okay, so that's the bottom part. Let's go normal to that front plane again. And let me back up a little bit here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a sketch here of the rectangle that's gonna go on top. Um, so let's see, so I'm gonna go extrude boss with a rectangle. And that rectangle is going to start somewhere, you know, somewhere here. And I'm just going to draw something like that. And we just want to say that um, we want to make sure that however big this thing is, we want the center or the midpoint of the rectangle to always be in line with the middle of the, of the circle. Okay? 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a relation between those. Um, I'm gonna go to feature and I'm gonna say, I'm going to say that I want well, I'm going to put my mouse on here and until the midpoint pops up and then I'm going to click on the midpoint. Click that midpoint. I'm going to hold down the control key. And I'm going to go to the center of the circle and click on it. So now it has two points, right? The midpoint of the box and the point, the origin. I want those to be vertical. So I'm going to click on vertical. And what it does is it moves this box over until those two points are vertical. And now no matter what size I make the rectangle, the the um, the centers are going to be aligned. Okay. Okay, well now let's see. Um, from the center of this circle to the top of this box is 3.75. So let's go dimension from here to the center point, 3.75. And what else? And we know that the width of this is 1.75. Okay. And what I can do now is I can just take a line from here. I'm just going to drop it inside the circle there. Escape, get another line from here into the circle. Escape. I'm going to put an arc right on top of this arc. Actually, I'm just going to draw a circle from the midpoint up to the top edge of the circle. Now I'm going to start trimming. I'm going to trim. I want to get rid of the bottom of this line, the bottom of this line, the outside of this arc. Um, okay, I don't need that relation anymore because it's all done. Um, so now what I've created is I've created this, this uh, enclosure here, right? All right, so we're done with that. And you can see there's that enclosure. We're gonna extrude it. So let me exit. And we're gonna do a, um, a midpoint, midplane extrusion on that again. And this is 15 sixteenths, 15 sixteenths in size. Mm, it looks like that. Very good. So now we are going to create a new plane. Uh, hopefully I remember how to do this. So we're going to go, uh, let's see, our front plane. We are going to reference a plane. And from that front plane, it's going to be a parallel plane, right? And our distance away from that is going to be, uh, let me see here, it's going to be one inch. One inch. And notice that that new plane is out in front. So from the pink to the blue is one inch. Okay. And that's what I want. 
And so now we're gonna work on that plane. So I'm just gonna go normal two. That plane one is highlighted. That's where we're gonna work on. So let's see how we're gonna do this one. Um, I'm going to, as a reference, just to keep my centers aligned, I'm gonna start by creating a center line from the origin. Um, uh, let's see, up to, I guess I don't really, I may not need this, but I'm gonna draw it nonetheless. I know that the, um, that the center of my circle is gonna be up at the top edge of this. So let me uh, go normal to again. I know that the center of this circle up here is gonna be right on the top line here. Um, so let's see what we've got. We've got a, the inner circle is a 1.375 and the exterior, I'm looking here. Oh, it shows it on the little, on the little, um, shows it on the little drawing, the back of the drawing. The outer circle is a radius of one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, oops, I'm going to draw a circle right at this point here. And it is a two inch diameter. And let's see, it's chopped off down at the bottom. There's a line down at the bottom. So let's see, um, let's draw a, let's draw a line down here, straight across. And let's say that we want this line, we want the center of this line always in line with the center of this line. Sound good? So let's go, I'm gonna, I'm going to put my mouse on here and I'm gonna zoom in so we can see it. I'm pretty close to the center right now. So I am going to click on that center point. I'm gonna hold the control key down. And I'm gonna click on this line. And I want them to be coincident. So what that does is it just moves over the center line so that it's always on, it moves over the center of this line so that it's always on here, always on the center. Okay, now it says that the, but the bottom here, this line is one inch long. So I should be able to go to smart dimension, dimension this line at one inch. And notice how it got longer in both directions because the center is locked onto the center line here. Okay. So now it says that the distance from the center point of my circle down to this line should be one in one fourth, so 1.25. So I'm gonna go click on this line, click on this point, should be 1.25. Slid that line up. So now I'm gonna take a line, take a line from the end point here up to the edge of the circle. Escape. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. From the end point here, up to the edge of the circle. Escape. Now I wanna make these two tangent, all right? 
So I want to make this line. So I'm going to click on this line. I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to click on the circle. I'm going to say I want them tangent. And it'll adjust this point until it's tangent. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing here. Click on this line, hold the control key down, click on the circle. See, I want them tangent. Good. So now this is the shape that I want. I don't want the bottom half of this circle. So I'm going to trim, get rid of this half, and this half. And there's that piece. And that's the shape that I want. And we're going to exit our sketch now. We're going to highlight. I forgot to pick extrude, um, ex do the extrusion before. So I'm just going to highlight my sketch and then go to features and say that I want it to be an extrusion. And we want it to go the opposite direction. We want it to go that way. We're going to go that way two inches. Okay, so there's that. And now on the face of this, there's a hole that goes through. So let's click on the face of this and go normal to. And we're going to cut a hole. So let's go extrude cut with a circle. And hang out on the edge here until the center point pops up. Click on the center. And draw in a circle. The size of that circle is 1.375, so let's dimension it. 1.375, enter. And that's it. And we're going to go through all that cut. There's that hole. There's also a little keyway that goes through there. So let's go back to this face, normal to. We're going to make a little keyway down here. So I'm going to draw another, um, another center line just so I know where my center is. Uh, so let's go, we're going to extrude a cut. I'm going to start with a center line. I'm going to put my mouse on the edge of the circle here until the center pops up. Click on the center, and I'm just going to drag a center line down. Escape. So I know that the, the keyway or the slot is going to be centered on this line here. Okay. All right, it says that the keyway is 7 sixteenths by one fourth. So seven sixteenths will be side will be side to side. One fourth will be deep. And how are we going to do this? Let's go uh, <clears throat> with a line. And I'm just going to draw it down like this. I'm kind of doing the same thing that I made down here. Um, I'm just going to click on the, I'm going to click, on, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. Put my mouse on this line until the center point pops up. So I click on the center point. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to click on the center line. And I'm going to say I want them coincident. And then just slid that line over, slid this line over until the center point is on the middle here. And I know that the slot is 716. So if I, oops, let me check my that's done. So if I dimension this line, it's going to be 716 inches long. And check. Okay. Um, Uh, 
And I want to draw a line from here up like this. And from here up like this. Mm, okay. I want, let's see, how do I want to do this? I want I want this line from the point here up to the corner there. I want that to be 0.25. So let's see if this will work. I'm not sure this is going to work. I'm just going to try it. I'm going to draw a circle from the center point out to the edge here. And then I'm going to trim. Find this point. And I want a smart dimension. This line right here. No. I want the distance from this line to this point to be 0 0.25. Hmm. What that did was that made my circle a little bit smaller. That's not what I want. So I am going to, I'm actually going to control Z, undo until that measurement dis disappears. Um, okay, so how am I going to do that? What if I trim off the outer okay, so I trimmed off the outer edge of the circle. Let's just see if this works. Now what if I dimension this line? I want it to be 0.25. Nope, that did the same thing. It shrank my circle. Um, control Z, control Z. All right. I'm going to figure out a way that What if I trim that line? And I say, now I don't know if this is going to work. I'm just speculating here. What if I say that if I put my mouse on the edge of my arc here, I go to center point. Hold down the control key. And I put my mouse on the end of this and go up to the end point of And it's work. All right, again. Sorry, I'm kind of in a quandary here. All right, how can I get the bottom here to move down and not the top to move up?
I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Maybe I'll pause this video while I think. Okay, so I, there's got to be an easier way to um, get the bottom of this thing to drop down versus the top to make the circle smaller. Um, but I have figured out a way around this. So here's my, hopefully this doesn't happen to you, um, but if it does, here's how I'm going to kind of trick this into getting what I want. So I'm going to go dimension. And I'm going to dimension from this point right here, the top, my center point. And I don't really want this measurement. I don't need this measurement, but I need this number. I, I, I know that this is correct. And I know that this is in the right location. It's just the depth of this is not correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this number right here, which is the distance from here to the edge of the circle. Right, And I'm going to add this depth, so 0 0.6517043 plus 0 0.25. And I'm going to dimension from the center of the circle down to here, those two numbers added together, and that should drop this number, this down. Okay, so let's, I'm going to write this down. Um, point. Six five one seven seven zero oh, four three plus point two five equals point nine zero one seven seven zero oh, four three. Okay, so I'm going to actually cancel out of this. I don't want this, and I'm going to control Z twice until that goes away. Okay, so now I want a smart dimension from the center point to the bottom of this line, and those two numbers added together were 0 0.9017743. All right, that did it. Um, unfortunately, I think that dropped, I think that dropped my entire box here. So now what I have to do is I have to say, okay, that is holding. Now I want this, yeah, that's what I thought, to be 0.25. And that'll bring the top edge back up. Probably if I would have done these measurements before I trimmed everything away, I think that probably would have worked. Um, I guess I probably should have taken better notes uh, on how to create this thing. Okay, so I think we're good here. Let me exit the sketch and we will through all on that cut. Yeah, there we go. And I think I made that a little more difficult than I should have, and I apologize for that. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's now go to the top. Let's go to the top, create the circle, and bring it down on top of this, that, that tube or that cylinder. Okay, so let's see, from the top plane. So from this top plane, I need to create a offset plane at a distance of six and a half. So I'm gonna go from here, I'm gonna go to the features tab, go references, plane, and it's gonna be a, from the top plane, we're going parallel at a distance of six point, Five and chart mode. Well, I'm going to take plane one, click on this, and click on the eyeball to hide it. Actually, right, so we don't see that plane anymore. I'm going to go to plane two and go normal two. Okay, so now we're working on this top plane. Hmm, but I need to. I need to be able to know where exactly where the center is. Hmm. 
Okay, so if I'm working up here, I don't know exactly where the center of this is. And I don't think it will allow me to create a center line, a reference line. Let's see, make a reference line. No, well, I guess it did allow me to make a reference line, escape. Is that still up on that top line? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's go normal. Let's go normal too again. Um, so it allowed me to make a reference line. I, I did that because I want. I, I I need to know exactly where the center of this piece is because that's where the center of the cylinder is going to be. So we're going to go um, the cylinder. Um, here. Oh. And the size is 1.75 diameter. And I guess we can. No, we're going to have to cut the hole in it. Um, no, we'll cut the hole there. So I'm going to exit the sketch, which I forgot to tell that I wanted it to extrude. So I'm going to highlight the sketch down here and say that I want it to be an extruded boss base. Flip the direction down. And as far as how far down we're going to go, we're going to go up to next. And it'll take it up until it hits the top of this thing. All right, good. Making progress. Let's go back to this piece here, normal two. Let's cut the hole now. Let's go extrude cut with a circle, hang out on the edge here till we get the center point. Uh, it says that this ream is going to be 0 0.875. Let's go center 0.875. Next sketch, and we're going to make that hole. Um, let's see. Up to next. Yeah, that'll work. Up to next. That mark. You see the hole there. All right, good. We're making some progress here. Uh, let's go back up to this space now. We're going to add the little loop de loop on top. Um, it says that we're going to be, I'm going to draw another reference line here. So I'm going to do an extrude boss. Start with a center line. Hang out on the edge till my center line pops up. And I'm just going to draw a line up like this and escape. Okay, so I'm going to use that, the end point of that line, as the center point for my circles. But first, it says that the distance from the center of this circle to the center of this circle should be 1.75. So let's dimension this line at 1.75. Good. Now it's at the right size. So let's draw a circle. And this tells us that the radius should be 9 sixteenths. When I go smart dimension, but it doesn't give me um, radius, it gives me diameter. So the diameter of a 9 16th radius would be 1.125. So 1.125 diameter. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to, I want to get a line now from, I hang out on the edge from this 
edge here, down until I'm inside the circle there, and hit escape. And do the same thing on the other side, hang out on the line till I get this yellow dot to come from here, down inside the circle. I'm gonna get another circle, started at the center here, go up to this edge. Now I'm gonna trim, I'm gonna trim. We're gonna get rid of the bottom half of this arc, bottom half of this, bottom part of this, and the bottom part of this. Okay, so I've created this enclosure here. And I think that's everything. Okay, so exit. And we're going to push this the opposite direction. So this button here, and we're just going to go up to next. And I should just take it up until it hits whatever's next. And escape. Perfect. Okay, let's drill the hole now. So click on here, normal two. Um, the size of that hole is, it says that the the thread is a half an inch, 12 UNC, 2B. Okay, so let's make that a half inch drill. So let's go extrude cut with a circle. I'm gonna hang out on the edge here until the center point pops up. There we go. Center. Smart dimension it. And it's 0.5. And exit. And it's just gonna, the cut is just gonna go uh, up to next, which will take it to the inner side of that hole. Okay. Uh, let's hide this top plane. So I'm going to go to plane two, single click on it, and go to the eyeball. Turn that off. All right, we're making some progress here. Now we have a, a tube, a cylinder that's off on the side here that we have to project over. And let's see, from the center of the tube here, from the center, it projects out. One and seven sixteenths. Okay, so from our original planes, here's our front plane, top plane, right plane. This is the one I want. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to come to references under the features tab, new plane, and I want it parallel at a distance of one and seven sixteenths. Well, seven sixteenths is 0. 0.4375. So that will be 1.4375. And then check mark. All right, good, good. Um, now what? So I'm going to go normal to, good, good, good. And what do I want to do here? I want to So from the midpoint of this line, this is that cylinder, right? From the middle of this, I want to go up three and three fourths to the center of the circle. I'm looking for the center of where the circle is going to be uh, drawn. So I got to figure out how to how to draw that. So let me draw a. Let's see if I can go with a reference line, center line. All right, it gives me the origin, that's fine. So from the origin, I'm just gonna draw a line straight up. 
Okay. I'm going to dimension that line. <clears throat> uh, 3.75. Okay. That, I'm going to hit escape. That is going to be, that end point of that line is going to be the center of our cylinder. Okay. So, let's see the diameter of that is one and one eighth. So let's go circle on that center point. Not like this. So I'll dimension it. And it's supposed to be one and one eighth. So that's 1.125. Exit. Oh, forgot this. So I'm going back down to sketch down here and say that I want to do an extrude boss on that. I'm not in that direction. So we're going to flip it. And we're going to go up next. Good. And we're going to highlight this face. Normal too. And we're going to drill a hole in that, and that hole is also half an inch with the extrude cut with a circle. Hang out on the edge, find the center, give it a dimension of 0.5. Exit. And we want to go <clears throat> up to next. Mark. Good. We're almost done here. Uh, we have one more. One more circle that we're going to cut right through here. Um, so I am going to go back to plane three. Go normal too. And if we do a extrude cut of a circle at the origin. And it's a three eighths of an inch smart dimension. Three eighths. Um, and really, we just have to pick a, a depth. I, I should have created a new plane right on the face of this but I didn't, I just used this one. So the depth of the cut here is just gonna be into the middle of the circle. See that? Check mark, and we have that hole. Okay. When we thread that, we're gonna to have to do the same thing when we thread that. Okay, so we're close, we're really close. Um, we got a couple of holes to thread. I'm gonna hide plane three. Okay, so we have a couple of holes to thread, actually three holes. We have this one, this one, and this one. I think that's it though. Okay, so let's um, let me zoom in on this hole here. I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna go hole wizard. Let's go to thread. Okay. Okay, so let's see, we want to, this is gonna be a tap, we're using inches, so it's an inch tap. It says that it's going to be a three eighths, the size of this thing is three eighths. So that's 0 0.375, 0 0.375, and it says that it's a 16 UNC. So 0.37516, there we go, right there. And we're cutting threads. 
and uh, select up to Hmm. What am I doing wrong? That okay, so red location is starting here. In location. I don't know why that's not. Let me try it also. Hmm, what am I doing wrong? Input data to create thread is not complete. All right, what am I missing? I don't see what I'm doing wrong. I'm going to have to stop recording again and figure out what I've done wrong. Okay, so I was forgetting to select a plane to start my, my hole from. So let's go to hole wizard. We're going to go to thread. Okay, so we're starting on this rim right here. So that's the, the hole we're gonna use. Um, so this one here, we have to select a, the plane that we're gonna start on. So I'm actually gonna go up to my part here and uh, 
there. How do I get my... There we go. We've got a little arrow. And we're going to go down to plane three. That's where we're going to start that. Slide down. This is going to be an inch tap. We're going to use 0.375-16. And... We're going to do a blind cut here. And we just, again, we need to increase this number until it goes through. Once it's through, then we can check mark. And we have that cut. All right. That took a little longer than and anticipated. Let's try it for this one here. Now, I think by looking at it, it says that this is a 12 UNC and a half an inch. I don't think a 12 UNC is a standard cut for a thread. So let's let, take a look here, thread. Okay. Um, this one's gonna be a half an inch. We need to go 0.5. Well, now this has a 13. So in order to um, actually draw in a 12, we would have to create the threads for this, but that's not gonna happen. So we're gonna get very close. We're gonna say that this is a 0.513 instead of the 0.512 UNC that it wants, okay? So we're going to just make sure that the blind is in deep enough where it's into the center of the hole here. Let me check that. Out. Yes, that one's good. We're going to do the same thing here. This one, red. And it also is going to be the 0.513 inch tap. And we just need to make sure that it gets inside here. We don't want it to go too far into the back side. Okay, so our last part now is just going to use the fillets to round over the edges. We're gonna go fillet. We're gonna set our fillets at an eighth of an inch, so 0.125. And let's take a look. What do we need to fill it? So this gets filleted. Stop giving me.
I don't like that edge. See what happens. Hmm. It doesn't like that edge right there. I'm not quite sure why. So I'm gonna delete that one out. Didn't like this one either, did it? I didn't like that edge either. Now, well, for some reason, let's see what that looks like. Something's kind of funky in here. Kind of funky, funky. See if we can. I don't like that. Huh. Now, for some reason, mine is not not able to fill it that edge. But anyways, there is. Our finished product. So let's take that now and let's save it. This is figure 14 34. Dash thirty four. Let's put it on a piece of paper. Uh, new line. A for landscape. Okay, so let's do front view. Okay. 
We're going to show hidden lines. Hidden lines. Show hidden lines. I'm also going to go to front view and go center marks. I'm going to go for all holes. Okay, so I have our center. Hey, it didn't give me one for this one. Very interesting that it didn't give me a hole for that. Auto insert that one in. Not quite sure why it didn't let me. Let's also put in our center lines. Okay. If I can get a bigger scale on this, let me check this. It's not a very big scale. Yeah, it's a little too big. What if we change to an what if we change to an A4 not landscape but portrait? Two, let's see if this will work out one, two. A little close together. Uh, probably should have done an A4 portrait versus an A4 landscape. Uh, if you choose to do the A4 portrait, I think it'd look better. Uh, let's go ahead and right mouse click edit sheet format. Everything looks fine. Right mouse click edit sheet. 
and and we are going to also say this is a PDF. Save it as a PDF. And that PDF you can uh, send to me as your assignment. All right, so hopefully that was, uh, well, I proved that it was a little trickier than I anticipated, but hopefully you can follow those directions and just fast forward where it took me, took me a long time to uh, figure some things out. Hopefully that helps. Uh, good luck.